I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and today, as part of Gold Derby's Meet the Experts film documentary panel, we are speaking with Lauren Domino, the producer, one of the producers of American Symphony, Moses Boyo, who's the director, co-director of uh, Bobby Wine, the People's President, Peter Nix, the director of Stephen Curry, Underrated, and Davis Guggenheim, the director of Still, a Michael J. Fox movie. Um, I'm always curious to ask this of documentary filmmakers, and uh, I, I've always I love hearing the responses to this question. What was the first uh, uh, thing that you saw of documentary film where you said where you had an inkling to yourself, yeah, that I want to do that, uh, and I want to start with uh, you, Peter. Har Harlan County, USA, the Barbara Copples. Uh, film about sort of labor in the coal coal mines it just like blew me away but but both it's like it's like access and just the artistry of the camera like really like just had a huge impact on sort of how i approached my my own craft and what about you davis so my father made documentaries His name i was, was about to say you can't cheat and say one by your father <laughs> you uh... <laughs> Well, um, so maybe I can I could talk about something else, but um, I'm joking about that. I'm joking. Yeah, but but he, um, I remember I was five years old. He took me on a um, on, on a. It was my first plane ride, and it was Robert Kennedy's plane as he was campaigning for president. Um, and I don't remember magical filmmaking. I just remember the circus of. I remember lights and cameras and saying, "This is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life." And what about you, Lauren? I mean, that's like such a a hard question. I think that mine's probably going to be like the Talking Heads concert films. Oh, stop uh, making sense. Stop making sense. Because I just one. remember being like a kid and watching that and feeling like I was there. And just the feeling of feeling transported um, in films and then... Yeah, I mean, this is such a hard question. I feel like this is a question that you've got to prep us before because there's so many yeah. on the list and it's just like, you know, older films that blew my mind, but it's just like so many, everyone hears, hears film blew my mind this year and like inspires me. So it's really, it's it's a tough one. Uh, did you see the, uh, did you see it uh, when it was re-released into theaters recently? I have not seen the re-release in theaters, but a few years ago, um, I went to a screening that was essentially a dance party. <laughs> and that was just a transcendent event. Yeah. I will admit that uh, my, when I was looking at, before we started, I was looking at my jacket. I, when sometimes when my shoulders are up here, I feel like David Byrne in that, in those suits <laughs> on stage there. It's such a classic. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what about you, Moses? Um, I think, well, huh. um, like Rory said, it's, it's a hard question, but I'll, I'll try. So, um, I grew up in a, in a village 5,000 feet above sea level in, in Eastern Uganda. And it was like just the bare minimum that we had growing up, you know, um, and, I really learned to observe life and to pay attention to my surroundings. So there was no electricity, you know, there was no radio. I I saw a TV for the first time. I think I was like seven or something. And I saw a film for the first time. And um, this, we had just, you know, moved to a, a more um, like a city kind of region. And I saw um, uh, a film, um by it must have been like it was a kung fu film um and later on i i got to you know i i realized that it was uh by um what's what's his name um he made hiroshima monamur and yeah anyways so um so it, it it just stuck with me and and the early hollywood uh cinema you know with um mm -hmm. uh like karate films and kung fu and and you know so i i uh, it it really blew my mind but i wanted to know how all this was made and and how how could you capture that stuff and and you know but i was very drawn to the human aspect uh, so like i 
I went on to do photography and, and you know, just shoot, observe picture, uh, people and take portraits. And, and that really uh, kept inspiring me and, and until today. Yeah. You know, I, there's so many there's so many layers to making a documentary. And uh, another thing I'm always curious about with documentary filmmakers is what is uh, your personal favorite part of making these of making these kinds of movies? And uh, I want to start with you, Lauren. My personal favorite part is just the people. Um, there's just a tremendous set of people who show up every day to make documentary films with a level of openness and vulnerability. And, you know, I think whenever you make something, it changes you. Um, and when you sit with things like in our story, there's a lot to confront of like joy and sadness that with our amazing team of editors, we had to sit and with Matt and we talked about these things. And to me, it's just the people and the humanity of people and their openness just like constantly inspires me. So that's a part that is throughout the whole process, even until it's on screens and it's impacting people. Um, the connective tissue of documentary filmmaking and building community is my favorite part, which feels general, but it touches everything. And uh, what about you, Pete? It's a tie, because I can't pick just one thing. We'll allow it. <laughs> And part of it's Lauren's answer. So the first, uh, just the camera. I just love the camera. I love being behind the camera. I love the unexpected, um, you know, being able to tell the story through the frame for me is is um, been a big part of my process. And um, there, there's something about it that's just magical that uh, I can't totally explain. And the feeling that I've gotten from sort of watching sort of incredible cine cinematographers like do their thing it always kind of can elevate especially cinematographers who aren't the director can often elevate films f far beyond them what, what might have been possible the other thing and I, I honestly think it's part of what 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 keeps me going is is the people is is um connecting with audiences after the film is done is always uh it's probably the most powerful thing um, that I experience in the arc of sort of from idea to production to um, getting into a festival to finding a distributor is um, just being and seeing people's reactions and having people come to me either immediately after the film um, plays or or years later people saying I became a doctor because I you know I saw the waiting room so I mean that that, that for me is um, something that's just um, very special for me. And what about you Moses? uh for me i think it's um it's you know how you you and and this kind of relates to lots of what what um the panel, uh, fellow panelists have said um it's the aspect of you know how you start with a different the i mean you start with a character he's a different individual and by the end of the film like with our film you know uh, five years of seeing Bobby Wine and and him and his wife and how that changes and and the the three and you know just his personality and how he develops and you know it, it's it's incredible like just being present to to observe to observe that in in the human you know in a human in a human being I think that's that really uh, interests me a lot um, yeah and Davis. It's interesting. I was just thinking that each of these films is about a really fascinating human, you know. Uh, and uh, when I was growing up, uh, the, the documentaries were was new and exciting, and they would take you to places you couldn't go. Right? They they had camera packs that, that allowed you to shoot without being plugged in. They had sync sound. They had uh, portable lights. You could go into a location that has never been filmed before. That's all easy now. I think what's so the, the the places that we're we're exploring now are, are humans, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, and uh, for each of these films, you know, and so that to me the favorite thing is is spending two years getting to know a really fascinating human and and all the different and 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 it's it's hard to find a human being that isn't incredibly fascinating one way or the other. 
So that's that's the fun part for me. Um, uh, to this uh, last question, I, I just want to have a little bit of fun here. Um, you know, we are an awards site, and uh, I mean, some of you here even have some uh, experience with awards. Um, I, I think one of the most in intriguing things that can happen is the music that plays when you walk up, if you if you are announced as a winner. And I'm curious for you guys, what would be your ideal walk up music if you were if you were to uh, win something? And um, uh, Moses, I saw you smiling there, so I want to start with you. <laughs> uh, we are fighting for freedom by Bobby Wine. Absolutely. Um, uh, Pete? I think I'm contractually obligated to say Big Fish <laughs> Lupin by Toby Nguigwe, who did the original song. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, maybe it'd be like, um, so this is a fun fact. I, I was adopted, and um, my mom, when she picked me up from the adoption a agency, and my name is Peter, uh, Peter and the Wolf, the, the symphony Peter and the Wolf was playing uh, on the car. So I'd probably roll that one. I like it. The oboe. Uh, Davis? It's a hard one. Uh, maybe maybe Back to the Future, uh, the score from Back to the Future. It's it, it's featured prominently in the movie. It's a mysterious little cue. And um, it's, it's such a celebration of him. And that score is a celebration of, of Michael J. Fox. And it's just it pumps you up. Pumps you up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And uh, how about you, Lauren? For me, it's obviously going to be a John Petit song because he's one of my favorite musicians of all time. And I would say it would be his new latest song. It never went away because it's just such a beautiful love song and a testament to the power of love. And it is in my head all the time. I just constantly am singing it. So it would be my chance to bring back in the documentary love of karaoke because I would definitely sing along as we walked on stage. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, that brings a full circle back to karaoke as always. Um, uh, so uh, uh, thank you, uh, Lauren, Moses, uh, Peter, and Davis for joining us. We wish you all the best and keep to, and keep coming to Gold Derby to make your predictions and lead up to this year's award season. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Charlie. Bye. Bye.